Hello everybody, uh, Wilder Ireland here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit on invasive species. I put a video up uh, a couple of weeks ago from one of my trail cameras of an American mink. There's a couple of comments about calling them etc. Um, I'm going to try and hold my camera the right way around this time. But, you know, there's every chance I won't. I can't multitask. But before we get started, I um, just thought I'd show you the old, the old springtime here. We have the uh, the wild primroses are out there in force, and the uh, the blackthorn. I think it's blackthorn anyway. Could be whitethorn, like that. I'm not great on plants, but the uh, yeah, the blackthorn is in bloom. So things are looking a little bit different around and about. A bit of a breeze here today, but uh, but uh, it's not it's not too bad. So yeah, you can see more good habitat there. You know, sort of territory you'd find badger sets and fox arts or dens. But anyway, so regarding the um, invasive species, so invasive species you probably all know are a species not native to uh, the country they're introduced and they can often cause a lot of damage it depends on the species but sometimes terrible damage because uh, you know the native animals haven't adapted to uh, to live alongside them and they haven't if they're a prey animal they haven't adopted defense strategies so the mink is a great example the mink this it's, it's a north american mink there are other mink in Europe but uh, the we had no mink in Ireland mink are another mustelid so there were fur farms set up for people who wanted fur coats and fur hats and what have you um, and mink escaped mainly just escaped by accident but then uh, some at least one uh, incident was uh, I think that was in Donegal or it might have been north of the border where animal rights protesters released them intentionally. That happened quite a bit in the UK. So I would say to those guys, I admire your spirit, I admire your passion, but just try to engage your brain, okay? When you're when you're when you're doing these kind of uh, your your strategy was off there because uh, you caused a lot more damage by releasing them um, to the environment, or maybe you did know when you just didn't care, or else it was ignorance. I don't know, but anyway. So, um, so yeah, mink have been around in Ireland now for, I think the first ones are meant to have escaped in the 60s or 50s, but they were pretty prevalent by the 80s. I used to do a lot of angling, a lot of fishing, um, and when I was uh, very young, well, teenager, in the uh, 80s, and I would go, you know, fishing all over the, the country, and I would often come across mink. I remember seeing on, along the canal, now this is in the rural canal, you know, and uh, I think it was Mead near Enfield, I think, Blackshade Bridge. But anyway, I, I just saw a, uh, a mink with her kits, with her kids, and just crossing the towpath in a rural part of, uh, alongside the Grand Canal, broad daylight. Didn't seem too concerned, I wasn't that close. But I, another time I was fishing at a lake, more like a large pond on, on a farm, a Tipperary, and it was uh, evening. Not quite dusk, but the light was kind of, you know, wasn't that bright. I was walking along the edge of the margins through reeds and rushes, and I suddenly heard something, looked down at my feet, and there was a, an adult mink just in front of me. He was, you know, I was walking along sort of parallel to the bank, and he was heading in towards the water. And I'd never seen anything in my life like it, because there's no animal really in Ireland, wild animal, that wouldn't, you know, run away or at least walk away when they see a human, unless they've become habituated, obviously. But uh, this guy just looked up at me and I looked down at him and, you know, and then he just slowly carried on towards the water. Didn't give a... So, yeah, there, there was no fear there, which, which surprised me. But anyway, so uh, mink are called, uh, trapped mainly. Um... But, and this goes for nearly all invasive species. You know, the genie's out of the bottle at this stage. Mink are nearly everywhere. 
in Ireland at this stage. And I honestly think calling them now is a waste of time. It's pointless, you know. Uh, and the minute you kill one, you know, soon enough an another one will come in and take over that territory. But they do roam a lot, uh, mink. They wouldn't be like pine marten, kind of stick to one area usually. But, but mink will wander a lot. And they're more adapted to... Uh, they uh, shorter legs than a pine marten, for example. Pine martens are boreal, they'll climb trees, whereas mink are more suited to the water. They're great swimmers. So they kill a lot of fish. In Ireland, they did a lot of harm to wildfowl. You know, nesting birds, etc. They, they've just, you know... So, yeah. And that's a theme, I think, with invasive species. If, if Obviously, <laughs> the best thing is, is not to let them escape in the first place, prevent it. But if they do get out... You've got to get in quick or you're just wasting your time, you know. So we're, I think we just have to accept the mink and, and just hope that, you know, nature kind of balances out. Um, and then you've aquatic invasive species. That's, they're even harder to control. Um, we had a fish called the chub, which are, which are very common in the UK. And they were introduced to uh, the Shannon system, not the Shannon itself, the River Inney, which of course is a tributary. So once it gets in a tributary, you know, and the fisheries body here, IFI Inland Fisheries Ireland, and uh, I'll try to speak nicely about them. I'm sure I'm going to fail, but uh, they actually claimed that they had eradicated them. They, they, they did, a, you know, an eradication program, carried out an eradication program. And I was thinking, how could they have eradicated them, you know? They were, they were, there was a lot of them in the river at the time. And uh, anyway, sh sure enough, I think they, they tried to get rid of them around the mid-2000s, uh, around 06 or something. And sure enough, they, they, they've showed up since, you know. And my, you know, they're in the Shannon system. There's not a hope uh, y you're going to stop them. And when I was younger, there was a fish called a roach. Um... And they were originally only in one river in Ireland. They were in the, the Blackwater, the, the Munster Blackwater, not the Leinster Blackwater. And they pretty much stayed there. They were introduced, they're pretty certain they were introduced by English anglers coming over to catch pike. At the time, we used to allow uh, live bait to be used for pike fishing. They still do in the UK. We banned it here, but not on ethical grounds, more because of what I'm about to tell you. But uh, they stayed in that system. But then, 70s or so, 80s, they started to appear in the urn system, so up around Cavan and north of the border. And they've since spread virtually everywhere. Um, and the issue was them, they're a very fecund species in that they would lay a lot of eggs compared to our, our main native fish at the time was a fish called the rod. It's a beautiful fish. Um, so the rod are very rare now. The roach just completely outcompeted them. And we used to have big shoals of bream. They were a popular fish with English anglers. I used to love fishing for them myself. And we had very large shoals with a very large average size of fish compared to the UK at the time. You know, their fish were averaging four to five pounds and, and, and a, you know, plenty of bigger fish. But since the roach came in, they've got, you know, much smaller and much harder to find. And what seems to have happened is hybridization where the roach and uh, the bream, they're all related. Um, so instead of true bream, we just seem to have lots of hybrids now. Roach, uh, roach uh, bream hybrids. Um, yeah, so it kind of decimated the, the ecosystem, they did. And they spread because m more pike anglers, but also I think that coarse anglers were just spreading them because they thought they were cool to fish for. They were easier to hold in a shoal if you were competition fishing and they were very popular in the UK. So, yeah, so the, the roach were a disaster. Now, of course, a lot of people, you know, when it comes to aquatic species, a lot of people just aren't very interested. They, you know, you can't see what's going on. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, roach have uh, really decimated the system. Chub, I don't think, are going to be as, as big of a problem, but, of course, they're going to be an issue. Um, I've, I've fished for chub in the UK. I do like fishing for them, but at the same time, that doesn't mean they should be, uh, you know, introduced. And people, anglers do seem to like just some anglers. <laughs> some are very uh, anti, you know, they're, they're very uh, pro-native uh, species, but 
you know, it's kind of like, oh, I think it wouldn't be great if we had such and such a fish and, 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 and they, they chuck them in, you know. So, uh, so then we come to our own governmental bodies who are responsible for dealing with, um, oh, I wanted to mention one more land-based, uh, there's so many of these species, but the, uh, the koi pu, or it's called, I, I can't pronounce it, koi pu or koi puyu, I think it's called. Anyway, look, it's a South American uh, rodent, basically a very large rat with large teeth, a bit like a beaver. Um, and they escaped in, in Cork. They think they were out of some sort of a, like a wildlife park or a petting farm or something. And they were found, I think, Corrigara River or somewhere. And this is up fairly recently, about 10 years ago. And uh, Parks and Wildlife tried to deal with them. I think they got about 10 or 12 of them. Um, and if you look now, there's a website on, on invasive species in Ireland. I might try and find a link for that. And, and it has them down as, they, they were termed like being, elim not being eliminated, but, you know, elimination underway. I wonder what that is. Like, are they hoping they'll commit suicide or something? I don't know. But, um... Now, there was reports of them being seen on the Royal Canal in Dublin, but I think that was later, they later decided that was just misidentification. But yeah, now they had an issue with, with, with them in uh, the UK, mainly in East Anglia, and they put a hell of a lot of money into uh, eradicating them. Um, in the, they escaped, they had fur farms over there, so another uh, fur farm uh, escapee. But uh, they claim they've dealt with them, so... You know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I won't be surprised if they show up. But they, they put a lot of effort and money in. And in the end, the best way they found to deal with the poor fellas was uh, they put rafts, floating rafts with traps on them and trapped them. Uh, but I'd say they're just uh, probably still a few around here in Ireland. I, I don't know. I can't say. But, um, yeah, but what I wanted to say as well is we have a fish here. A lot of people will be aware of pike. They're an apex predator, big, long, kind of fierce, ferocious looking fish. And uh, so our own IFI, who we pay to uh, manage our fisheries, protect our fisheries. So they, they, they go about, um, it's some of the, the more, the Western lakes, the traditional trout lakes, they, they actually kill them, gill net them, remove them, electrofish them, mainly gill net them, which also kills other species, obviously. A gill net, if you don't know, it's it's like just a mono, you know, a plastic type netting, and uh, it's just laid like a barrier. It's like they do in Australia to try and reduce the, the, the shark numbers on on the on the surf beaches. So the fish just swim in, and the, the gills get caught, and they die there, a fairly slow death. So, so the reason they do this uh, officially is that these are traditionally trout lakes, and uh, you know these pike are going to eat all the trout, um, and we need to get rid of them. And of course. Anyone with the basic knowledge of the environment these days would know that these apex predators have a role in, uh, you know, removing sick and injured fish, diseased fish, etc. The argument they used to use, which was a pretty flimsy one, was that pike are not native to Ireland, so they're an invasive species. They're still listed as invasive. But a study about, I think it was 10 years ago or less from, I can't remember the name, it was uh, UCD, University College Dublin, but they did genetic analysis and they reckoned that the pike came over around the time of the Ice Age or the end of the last Ice Age. We, it was originally thought they came over, you know, in the uh, maybe the 16th century monks brought them in for food. But, but either way, they're established here now, you know. So they killed them. Uh, why did they do it? Well... I think it's the usual reason. It's whoever shouts the loudest. There, there's these angling groups, trout angling groups on uh, that fish these waters, Loch Con, Loch Corrib, Loch Mask. Um, they lobby and they say the trout must be protected. Bear in mind, a lot of these guys have competitions where they kill the, kill the trout. <laughs> you know, the hypocrisy is hilarious. But... Um, yeah, so... Now, I'm not, I'm not slamming all trout anglers because there was another survey where, you know... These are bodies representing trout anglers. That doesn't mean every trout angler is a member or agrees with, with their policies. Even a lot of trout anglers feel that this, it's, this pike killing, culling pike is just ridiculous. So, but they still do it, you know. And another study, which I think IFI were involved in, would you believe, found that they have now, they used to eat mainly trout, because that's mainly what was in there, trout, and, and the larger pike would take salmon sometimes. 
But now, as I discussed earlier, the roaches have spread into all these western trout lakes as well. And the pike are feeding more on the roach. So in a way, you could argue, you know, they're removing another uh, competitor to the trout. But, you know, it's just ridiculous. And again, taxpayer mo taxpayers' money has been spent on killing these fish. And, you know, and we used to have a lot of tourists who would come over and fish your pike, and they would release them alive. Well, not back in the 80s. There was a German and French taking them away in freezers. But the UK anglers now would, uh, would return them alive, and there's a limit anyway. You can only take one fairly small pike, or two fairly small pike. But, um, yeah, so there was a big tourism industry, and a lot of them were starting to fish the western lakes. Uh, but now the Irish government just uh, decided, well, we'll kill them, you know. So, so, so there you go. Our, our tax uh, pair euro is going to good use again by our own government. You know, if they're not killing badgers, they're killing pike. Uh, and particularly with the case of Inland Fisheries Ireland, it's very galling because at least the Department of Agriculture is looking at it from, even if it's incorrect, an agricultural perspective. IFI are the very body that are meant to protect our fisheries. So, so there you go. That's it. Um, I could, there's so many invasive species. I should mention zebra mussels. They came in, they think they came in from ships that were, or boats, yachts maybe, that were, were, were bought overseas and brought in from Europe. And they've had a massive detrimental effect as well. They're filter feeders, like similar to mussels, uh, saltwater mussels. So they, they filter the water and they get the, you know, organisms microorganisms out of the water so what they've done is if you go to places like say Loch Derg for example they all they that was always colored water and I, and people who weren't aware would say god that's a filthy lake look at it it's polluted but that's just the natural way it's supposed to be and when these zebra mussels come in they'll start to clear these lakes which looks lovely but it's actually very bad for the lakes the sunlight can now get down to the bottom you'll get excessive algae growth um, as I said, they're removing microorganisms that other species feed on. Um, and the fishing did get harder, not that that matters to a lot of people, but just, just as a side note, um, you know, these big bream shoals I talked about used to come quite close into shore, but, but, but the um, clearer water, they kind of stayed further out. So you could really only get them at night time. Um, but our coarse fisheries are, are pretty much destroyed in Ireland. Coarse fisheries, to put it simply, are, are, are freshwater fish other de, than uh, game fish, which would be salmon and trout. And there's many reasons. I've mentioned invasive species like the roach I have meant, uh, and the zebra mussel. But uh, pollution, of course. And, uh, but another big factor was widespread poaching. See, traditionally in Ireland, we would not eat these coarse fish. You know, we were only interested in eating trout and salmon as regards freshwater fish and mainly fishing for them too, uh, sport fishing. But um, what happened was we had huge tourism from the UK anglers. I used to go out when I was young and I'd often come across them. They loved coarse fishing, but they would release their fish. Excuse me. And believe it or not, most fish that are released will survive, especially if they're handled properly and cared for. But... Um, but then we had a lot of immigration in, oh, when I suppose after early 2000s it started and when the EU opened up. And what happened was a lot of people from other countries who would eat these fish, you know, and that was just, you know, that's their culture. We all have different cultures. I'm, there's no issue with it. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was explained that, we, you know, you can't be, but they, they cleared out a lot of the fisheries, the coarse fisheries. You know, and it's uh, absolutely nothing like it was even 20 years ago. Um, and so that's what happens. There's a lot of factors. A lot of people aren't aware of this because unless you're kind of into aqu aquatic biology or whatever, or you're, you're a fisherman, uh, what goes on under the water isn't, you know, it's just not visible, you know. So... But that's a bit about invasive species. Um, uh, my read on it pretty much is, you know, once they're out there, you know, it's hard to uh, put the genie back in the bottle, get the toothpaste back in the tube. Um, and it gets to a stage where you just have to uh, just kind of accept it, you know. Obviously make as big an effort as you can at the start when they're first discovered to see, you know. And I mean, if you had a bit of land, right, and you were worried about mink, 
you could control them on that bit of land. You just trap constantly. And, uh, you know, you could keep that area mink-free or relatively mink-free. But as soon as you, you know, stop those measures, other mink will just come in. And to do it on a widespread basis, you know, throughout the country, it's, you could just forget it. So, uh, anyway, that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head off, give you one last look at the, uh, the blackthorn and the... Uh, the Goldilocks, I was about to say, the primroses. And uh, anyone who's interested or, or thinks anyone would be interested, please try and subscribe. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to check the cameras, see if anything else unusual has come up. But I think we've got most species at this stage, but you never know. Uh, I'll put a link to that mink video if any of you haven't seen a mink. And I might put a link to that uh, invasive species website. Anyway, all the best. Thank you so much. Adios.